Thanks, Matthijs, for your presentation. It was very enlightening. And I don't know if you agree, but um, when we talk about data sharing, like we have been intensively doing for the past few days, it's not that hard to sort of lose a grip to reality. After all, we're talking about something very much abstract. And um, that sense, I think you all enjoy the next session. That's where my colleagues bring us all back to reality and to the practicalities of data sharing. So now I give the floor to Michiel Stornebrink from uh, TNO, Senior Data Ecosystems Researcher, Sonia Jimenez from IDSA, Director of Data Spaces Technology, and also from IDSA, Mariano Blayandreu, Director of Delivery. Ah, there you are. I was hoping you would uh, join us uh, as well. All right, so uh, please stay with us with, uh, for, the, for the last session uh, before lunch. I know it's a cliche. We are in between the morning session and, the, and your lunch. Um, please stay with us. Um, we have the uh, opportunity, uh, the honor to present to you here something that we are recently started working on from the DSSC. So, so far we've seen everything that's already here and now we are going to, uh, to um, uh, give you um, the first insights on what we are calling the, the toolbox. But um, before uh, I start with that, um, I want to ask the question, does anybody recognize this building? Maybe hands? A few? Only a few. It's actually here in Darmstadt. Uh, this is um, uh, an office of the European Space Agency. Actually, this is where the European Space Operations Center is located. And uh, I find this very, uh, very intriguing and, uh, and really nice. I mean, we are talking about data spaces, but this is about, well, our outer space and, uh, and all, the, all the stuff uh, ESA is doing. And one of the services that they are doing here, at least from my understanding, is the uh, space surveillance program. Uh, you may know that there's a lot of objects now in space. Also a lot of smaller objects because of coalitions that have taken place. So here, it, uh, so here in Darmstadt, they are tracking over a million objects of the size of one centimeter and larger in order to provide services for everybody uh, who's working in, um, in, the space, uh, in the space world. And um, I would like to make this analogy, and, and here it also stops, because what we would like to do with the, TS, uh, with the DSSC um, toolbox is also to, well, at least provide an overview and catalog, uh, catalog and uh, track um, all the implementations of data space um, uh, components, both software and non-software, I come to that, uh, that, is, uh, that is out there. And I think it resembles to um, the radar you already showed with us, um, Mariano, and um, uh, this might be uh, the, next, the next iteration of, uh, of addition that we can, uh, can add to that. So, let me give you an example. Matthijs already touched upon it, huh? so we have these building blocks, then we have this, for the, in this first uh, version, for the first time, a functional overview of components, so abstract um, uh, descriptions of what you need. And, um, uh, and then we have implementation, stuff that our community of practice uh, and everybody out there is, uh, is, working, uh, is creating. Example of a technical implementation we see, many connectors out there, EDC connector, VTT, Tele, uh, telecom DI, uh, DIH uh, and TSG connector, many more. Um, implementations of what in the functional overview that Matthijs uh, mentioned is called the participant agent, aka what we call the data space connector. And this connector provides the functionalities that are being described in several building blocks. Here I mentioned several because it's not a one-to-one -one, um, uh, link here but there are um, um, certain components that more directly link to uh, a single or a few, um, few uh, building blocks. Um, another um, example of an implementation we, are, um, uh, we, we think of is uh, on the organizational and uh, 
business uh, building blocks. So for example, the Citra rulebook, it's just an example. Template number nine, the data set terms of use. Huh? We see this as, uh, as an implementation of in what, what can be a data product contract template component, which provides the functionalities as being described in the building block of the contractual framework. Um, so by this, we really connect the stuff that is out there, all the implementations uh, that support and, and enable data spaces to the building blocks, so the, the capabilities as described in the, in the DSSC blueprint. So here a graphical representation of how we see this. So blueprint describes building blocks, green and blue. Overview of components as part, integral part of this, uh, of this blueprint. And then the toolbox, the catalog of all the implementations um, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that we track. So let me now go into why we need this toolbox. First of all, to set up a data space, you don't, of course, you have, you, you, there's value in the, in the uh, description of the building blocks, but you, you actually need implementations to operationalize um, uh, the, data, the data space. So it's, it's, it's something we need to operationalize the data space. And there are many data space solutions out there so I can imagine, and as, especially for me that, uh, that holds, we can't see the forest for the trees. It's, it's, it's growing. Maybe not yet a million pieces of uh, one centimeter or larger, but at least um, uh, many of them. And at this stage, uh, anybody can claim to adhere to the DSC guidance. So how are we and you selecting future-proof solutions? How can we see the difference between um, uh, well, mature and less mature uh, solutions. So I think we as a DSSC can provide also guidance on this, on selecting uh, future-proof solutions. So this is why we uh, started the development of a curated catalog of implementations. And what do we mean by that? Or at least what are the, now the, the, uh, the more scoping um, uh, requirements? So first of all, it covers both technical and business organizational capabilities. So please don't think this is a list of only software components. It can be, like a, in my example, also a uh, contract template that you provide, or maybe a business model canvas, or um, anything that also supports these, uh, as Matthijs already, already mentioned, these uh, very important um, business and organizational aspects of data spaces. Secondly, the implementation can be software and non-software. So also support for the green building blocks can be implemented in software. A, um, um, a nice, uh, maybe the data space radar could be, could be seen as a um, uh, implementation that can support, uh, support in there. Um, we are looking to opening up for both open source, but also proprietary implementations. We recognize that open source plays an important role, but it's not the only thing. Uh, so also if you are um, um, uh, a company providing uh, proprietary solutions for uh, customer needs, this, is, this can very well be uh, cataloged in, uh, in the toolbox. Uh, and finally, uh, as I already mentioned, it needs to adhere to the DCC guidance. So for that, we need to validate the uh, implementations. Uh, and um, uh, my colleague Sonia will uh, tell you a bit more about how we will do that. For the first phase, as we, as we have seen, now included in Blueprint version 1.0, there's a functional overview of these technical components. So this is where we start off with. And Mariano will later on uh, announce how and when you can expect what. Uh, but here uh, you see, for example, this participant agent with which I relate to in, uh, in my example. From a, not a data space participant, but from a solution provider perspective, why would you want to be in there? Well, like in the days with the yellow pages, I think it's, uh, it's nice to be able to showcase the solutions that you provide in a structured uh, way uh, related to uh, 
um, uh, the work we here are, as, a, as a community are uh, creating. So being listed in the toolbox improves the findability of your uh, solutions and also users can better position how your solution uh, is different or maybe is complementary to, uh, to, uh, to other products and services. And I started off with, uh, we are going to, to track and trace and create a curated toolbox. But um, unlike the European Space Agency, we don't have telescopes. So actually, you are our telescopes. And uh, this, uh, this will come back later on, on how, we th uh, how we require you in getting this uh, curated uh, toolbox uh, done. Um, Thanks very much. That concludes my part of, and now I would like to hand over to, uh, to Sonia. Thank you, Michiel. So, hi, everyone. Um, so, now you saw what the toolbox is about, but there's one piece of information missing, and that's how do the implementations end up in the toolbox? Because as you can imagine, not every single implementation out there would qualify to be part of this toolbox. So we need some process, some quality gate, to make sure that all the content that we have in that toolbox is really of high quality. And this is why we are defining a validation scheme for the building blocks implementations. So this validation scheme will um, comprise all of the building blocks that you've seen, so the organizational and business building blocks and the technical building blocks. And it will be, it will consist of a self-assessment or a very self-assessment for the, the specific components. Okay, so there will be self-assessments, as I said, for both types of um, building blocks. So uh, for those of you who have implementations, you will be able to assess this implementation through the self-assessment. And if you qualify, if uh, you meet the requirements established, then your implementation will be showcased in the toolbox. Okay. These self-assessments will be aligned, of course, to the content of the blueprint. So in the blueprint, you've seen we have functional specifications and technical specifications, and the questions of the assessment will come from the content of the, of the blueprint. So it, it will be all aligned. Um, and this is just to name some of the benefits of this validation scheme. So uh, first, um, everyone who takes a look into the toolbox can be sure that the content there, so the implementations that are showcased, meet certain requirements as we have defined and uh, are, uh, as they are part of the blueprint. And these are just three types of stakeholders that can benefit from uh, this validation scheme. Just to name some, um, so for instance, for solution providers, they will be able to assess that the implementations um, that they have deployed meet these requirements as uh, specified by the DSSC. Then for data space authorities, maybe uh, look into a different perspective, more from the organizational and business perspective. They can also see if um, the business models that they have defined, the use case, the uh, governance models, if they are also aligned and compliant to what we have specified in the DSSC. And for any data space participants, so they have one place uh, to go, um, this toolbox, where they can be sure that we've um, assessed the quality of the implementations that are showcased there. But again, any um, participant of the data space or anyone who wants to create or to participate in a data space can benefit from the toolbox and also from the process that we define to bring these implementations to be showcased there. So the process has, well, two main parts. So for the applicant, what you need to do uh, first is to prepare, and in order to do so, you can check the specifications of the blueprint. Um, once um, you're ready, the, you can um, um, apply and conduct the self-assessment. This will be um, an automated process. This will be found uh, in a platform. And um, once you've gone through the process, if everything is correct, then our part from the DSSC side is to publish your implementation 
um, in the toolbox. And of course, this is going to be an ongoing process, iterative, because we will have newer versions of the blueprint, because we will always have new implementations or maybe updated uh, implementations um, coming up. So it's also in our hands to maintain um, this process and to maintain the, uh, the implementations uh, of the, um, inside the toolbox and to maintain the quality uh, of the toolbox. Okay, this concludes my presentation. So I will hand over now to my colleague Mariano. Uh, hi again. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank Sonia and Michael for the great job, not only today on stage, showing this presentation and providing this insightful presentation, but also because of the work that is behind that we had to align the toolbox and the validation schema with the conceptual model, with the asset model, with the blueprint as a whole, and it, it has happened only in the previous weeks because it's quite a new thing. So excellent, excellent job, thank you very much. So now we move to the next step. The concepts are clear, are specified and, and aligned, and then we need to operationalize this. So how this is going to happen? We, we know what we want, but now, how is this going to happen? In the next weeks, we will be doing this. We'll be operationalizing, so trying to understand how you, that out, you are out there, the outside DSSC, how we, you can contact us and submit your implementations that are consistent to the components, to the building blocks, and so on. So, in the meanwhile, while we operationalize this, this process, if you are an implementer, or a user of an implementation, and you think that implementation can fit into what we explained today, you can do a few things. You can get familiar to the Blueprint 1.0, of course, because you need to, to see how your implementation fits the specification of the building blocks, of the components, and, well, see how it matches, because you will need to explain it, okay? That is, that is the, 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 the main point to understand how your implementation overlaps, ideally 100%, to the specification described in the Blueprint 1.0. And th this is what you can do in the meanwhile in the next weeks. Our plan, <coughs> maybe you expected some specific date. Well, what we are, what we are going to do is we are, ask, we are going to ask you to stay tuned on the, all the dissemination uh, means that we have in the SSC because we will write some blog posts best you can do is to, su su to subscribe to the newsletter and give some more work to Sonia so we'll have more subscribers and as part of the newsletter we'll provide further details on what the next milestones are. Most probably we'll have one of the inside webinars dedicated to this and we'll show you exactly how to proceed when all the steps are clear. And then, well, we expect to have the, 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 the system and all the processes behind ready for your submissions by the end of April, and with all those submissions processed and properly curated, then we will we'll be in, in a position to launch properly the toolbox after summer at some point. So that is it from my side. We are a few minutes ahead, so Clara, use them wisely. Okay. Thank you, Mariano, Sonia, and Gil. And now, um, before we head to lunch break, I'd like to say it's been a pleasure being host you this morning, and to quickly give a heads up on what's coming right after lunch. We continue here in Room Spectrum with Trek Unite. There will be a presentation on the three simple initiatives. In Room Titanium, we can watch a role play session to present the value of the blueprint, should be interesting. In Room Platinum, that's track adoption number one, we will have a panel discussion on cross-collaboration among different data spaces. And in Room Ferrum, that's track adopt number two, you're invited to learn more on trends in the data economy. And now please grab something to eat, talk to us from the DSSC, pretty much in any direction that you look, you're gonna see at least one of us. Know that we're available and very much looking forward to exchanging with you. See you around, enjoy your break. <laughs>